You're listening to The Journey Podcast. What happens when we swap the weight of others' expectations for the freedom of defining our own path? Stay tuned for today's episode. Hi, I'm Petra Brunbauer, and with decades of experience with sadness, pain, anxiety, and stress, I finally figured out how to leave all that behind. And this podcast shows you how to break free permanently so you can reclaim your sanity and find the self-esteem and energy to go after the life you desire. With real talk about mental health, holistic healing, and the tough journey of coming out the other end. This is The Journey Podcast. Welcome to today's episode. In this episode, we delve into the transformative journey of overcoming low self-esteem and emerging with a newfound sense of authentic self. We touch on the challenges and pivotal moments that shape this journey, such as navigating the aftermath of bullying and personal loss. Our conversation opens up about the resilience required to move through life's trials and the profound impact these experiences can have on discovering one's true identity and confidence. Our guest shares his personal narrative, offering a beacon of hope to those who might find themselves on a similar path. He discusses the pivotal steps taken towards self-discovery and the significant changes that led him to embrace his authentic self. This episode is an invitation to reflect on our own stories of resilience and growth, encouraging us to embrace the journey towards self-acceptance and the strength that comes from facing our deepest challenges. Cody Jones is an entrepreneur, fitness advocate, personal growth enthusiast, owner and founder of Absolute Landscapes, and host of the Pure Wisdom podcast. He believes that mindset, health, and personal growth are foundational influences in our lives. Here is my interview with Cody Jones. Hi, Cody. It's so great to have you on the podcast today. I've been looking forward to getting to chat with you because living authentically is not just an interesting topic for today, but also I think a really, really important thing to talk about, especially in today's world. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I know we've been looking forward to this. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. So I'm glad that you're here today and we can dive into this. Now, I'm curious about your story and what you have been through and been challenged with. So would you like to share about yourself and kind of where you've come from and what you do now and how all of that connects together? Sure, sure. I'll try to be as condensed as I can about this. I think about this often. I think about, I don't know if you do this kind of where you are, where you used to be type thing. And you kind of look back and reflect and where you want to be the next five, 10 years. And it's actually amazing to me because at one point in my life, I was the person as a child, a teenager, a young adult, I just did not have almost any self-confidence. You know, I just did not believe in myself. I just felt like who I was supposed to be was supposed to fit into someone else's narrative or someone else's outline or someone's box of what I was supposed to be. And Anyone who's sort of in that space knows that you might be able to sustain that for a while, but eventually you're going to get to the point where you feel like you have, I don't want to use the word freedom, but you almost feel like you have zero input on your own life because you don't. If you're living based on what someone else thinks you should be, whether that's a parent or a spouse or a sibling or whatever it is, if you're living inside that box, it's really hard for you to bring your own light and your own gift to the world, which of course, if it is your gift, the world needs your gift, you know, it's something unique to you. So at one point in my life, I was just not really a confident person. I think back often to my childhood and I was never really bullied or anything like that. It wasn't really about that. I was just not really a confident person. You know, I just didn't really have the self-esteem that I felt like I needed. Going into that, going into the early adulthood and kind of some of the things I've learned over the past decade of my life, we can maybe talk on where this all changed, but there was a change that happened on the self-confidence portion of it. Now I feel like I'm a person who can, I have goals for myself, I have a vision for myself, I'm sort of trying to live and push towards that. And you simply cannot achieve the goals or the vision or the layout of your life until you can kind of be your own person and step in that role and say, you know, I don't really have to 
making people proud is kind of one thing, but it's not about living up to what people say you should be. And we see that a lot. We see that a lot, unfortunately. So yeah, to answer your question, at one point in my life, I was very not confident to have the self-esteem. And now I feel like I'm putting myself in situations. I'm getting on platforms like this and talking to people. I'm trying to help other people sort of increase their own self-confidence because I know how limiting and debilitating it can be to not have that. And fortunately for me, I was able to realize that it's still a pretty young age. I was in my early 20s, mid 20s when that shift sort of happened. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying to do now is just kind of get the word out and just share kind of my experiences, how I've done it. And maybe other people can hear it and do the same. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And I do feel that many younger individuals and even teenagers have that exact problem where they are not quite sure who they are or how they can express that in a way that actually feels good to them. And we still do that in adulthood very often when we are in a culture of people pleasing or kind of pretending we are something so we avoid conflict. So that kind of carries forward into our adult lives as well and makes it, like you said, very hard to actually feel good in your own skin and to find what it is that you like doing and who you are. So take us through when and how that shifted for you. You said that you found a change in your early 20s. And that was what kind of changed in the self-esteem part. So what happened and how did you experience that? And how did that change things for you? Sure. I want to make a comment before I get into that. You mentioned about people pleasing. The unfortunate thing about people pleasing is it has the opposite effect. When we people please, what we think we're doing is we're building friendships and relationships with people. But really, and these people may not even be aware of this, really what happens subconsciously is with this is that they see you can't really trust a person who is continuously trying to people please because that person is not voicing their own opinion. You don't know what they think, what they feel. And while it might sound cool or it might sound like something you want to entertain to, for someone to agree with you, if you've ever been in a situation where somebody agrees with every single thing that you say, that should really throw up a red flag. And you're like, okay, wait a minute, what's going on here? I just want to make that point because that's something that I think is bypassed because we think that, like I said, we think we're building this relationship. We think that this person is going to like us. But at the end of the day, you can't trust a person who's trying to people please. And also, too, at the same time, your opinion, what you truly want is not being voiced which if you do that long enough, it creates resentment and that's a whole nother animal. So yes, yeah, so how did this shift happen? For me, and this is something that I push a lot and it's not for everybody. It's going to be different for each person. But for me, one thing that was really sort of the catalyst for this shift was the fact that I started a business when I was 20 years old. I still have that business now 10 years later. So entrepreneurship for me was a big shift because it's one of those things that it forces you to get out of your comfort zone. You have to get out. You have to knock on the doors. You have to make the calls. You have to put yourself out there when, especially starting out, rejection is almost certain. That was sort of one thing that kind of shifted into that. When I was 25, my mother passed away. She passed away tragically and suddenly. And that was another shift. That was another sort of a big I guess you would say, I don't know, a step into that shift direction. That was five years ago. And now one thing that sort of shifted that even more is that I'm trying to put myself out there even more. So now to give you an example, in my late 20s, 27, I think it was, I started working out. I started getting into fitness. That was another thing. And this is something that I preach a lot too, is having some sort of plan with yourself to, and maybe we can talk about this, to increase your self-confidence. Because basically, in a nutshell, what self-confidence is, is being able to trust yourself. How can you trust yourself? Well, one of the ways you can trust yourself is you can keep the promises you make to yourself. If you have a goal or a vision or you have a plan, whatever it is, a fitness, the reason I push fitness so much is because it helps, obviously, but it's so easy to do this with fitness because it can apply to everybody. If you tell yourself, I'm going to work out, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5.30 p.m. If you keep that schedule consistently with yourself, you build the self-trust with yourself. And by definition, that's by definition, almost verbatim, that's what self-confidence is. Started this fitness plan, started working out. Just in the last year or so, I've taken that even to a next step, which is the martial arts training. I started training martial arts, which is a huge leap outside of your comfort zone for anybody. And started doing things like the cold water therapy, the cold plunging, which is, man, that thing never gets easier. It's a battle in itself to get in that thing. I guess you could just say the entrepreneurship was the catalyst, kind of getting outside of my comfort zone, really understanding how to talk to people, how to kind of put myself out there. And looking back on it now, and even then it was just 
like when you put yourself out there and you prove yourself to yourself, I think that's really what kind of what it's all about. You can prove that this is intimidating, but you can prove to yourself that you can get through this. Looking back now, it's almost like that was a snowball effect because I said, okay, you know what? This is scary territory. I've never been here before, but I'm managing it. I'm handling it. Okay. What's the next step? Maybe can we try a little bit more? Can we try a little bit more? And that's what's kind of led into these things. And, you know, now I'm three, four years into this fitness journey. And I get asked often if I am a personal trainer or a coach or whatever, just because I'm so knowledgeable about the topic. So it's like, man, looking back from that, and I was one of these people, I was kind of a lean guy when I started working out. I, I guess fortunately or unfortunately, depends on how you look at it with relating to other people's story. I was not overweight, so I can't comment on losing the weight and the building the muscle, but I was a lean guy. So I do know kind of that part of it. I wanted to put on the weight. I wanted to put on the muscle. I was just kind of a lean guy and, and I wanted to build the muscle. So that was another thing. When you break this down, when you condense it into a summary, it sounds like what I've done over the past decade is try to prove myself to myself. Like I said, I think that's by definition what self-confidence is. That's really interesting that you mentioned that because I think I have never thought of self-confidence in a manner of building up trust with myself, but that is a great way of looking at it. I love that. So you found fitness and to kind of make promises to yourself and then following through in those. Are there other ways that people can build up their self-confidence? So if they're, for example, not into fitness or exercise or physical things, are there any other avenues that we can build up self-confidence? Sure. And before we get off off that point, we talk about building self-confidence by keeping the promises that you make to yourself because you have to ask yourself, okay, I don't know how you feel about intuition. A lot of people, they feel intuition where it comes from is sort of irrelevant, but the point is that we have intuition about things. There are things that are going to come into your life, and you have a, we call it a gut feeling about this thing. You know, I, man, I don't know if I should do this. I don't know if I should pursue this. I just have this feeling about this thing. So it's like, how can you trust that if you don't build the self-confidence with yourself? There are things, you can have the best parents, the best spouse, the best partner, siblings, friend, whatever, but there are things in your life that only you know the answer to. Sometimes only you know what's best for you. And so it's like, how can you trust your own self-judgment if you're not even confident in what you believe about yourself? It sounds like self-confidence is like a just don't let people push you around type thing. But it's actually much deeper than that, man. Self-confidence is so important because you have to be able to trust that own inner guidance for yourself. You ask, what are other ways that we can do this? And I know we've touched on in the past about adversity and that kind of thing. And this is kind of what I was leading up to with the cold water therapy, the MMA thing. If you're not a person who's not into fitness, if that's not kind of your thing, if you can do something that is mentally or physically challenging to you, it doesn't have to be fitness. It doesn't have to be walking. It doesn't have to be anything like that. But if you can put yourself in an environment, like let's say a career, you're trying to build your career, you're trying to do whatever it is, put yourself in the sales room or in the room with people who are more educated than you are, who are farther along your career, because what that's going to do, that's going to push you outside of your comfort zone. I know we all hear about the comfort zone. It sounds so cliche. We've all heard it a million times, but you simply cannot grow if you're in the same spot. If you're in the same spot, you're going to be in the same spot. You can't grow out of that. It's so important to push yourself out of that. And I'm not saying don't do anything drastic or crazy because it's not about that. If you can make the small improvements over time and capitalize on that. I always tell people, if you look at a staircase that has 100 steps, you're not going to go from step one to step 100. You're not going to make that leap. And if you look at it that way, it's going to look like intimidating and daunting and impossible because it is impossible to go from step one to step 100. But if you do each step at a time, you can look back over your shoulder and you say, man, I've came 50 steps. I have 50 more to go. I have 75, 25 more to go. If you just take this into bite-sized chunks and just keep going forward, whatever it is for you, it's different for everybody. But the beautiful thing about this is this philosophy can apply to anything, fitness, career, for some people it's family relationships, friendships, all of this can be broken down into a simple philosophy of do the thing that challenges you to be the person that you need to be for that thing. Because another thing, I don't want to get off on a tangent here, but another thing that we talk about on the podcast a lot on my podcast is like goal setting, where you have to be the person who is able to live and achieve and maintain that goal. It doesn't matter if it's fitness or career or family or whatever. It's easy to want these things but it's like maybe the reason you don't have it yet is because you're not the person who can get and maintain that goal. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. So there's something to be said for breaking your goals down into smaller bits and then kind of taking those and building up your confidence 
as you're kind of achieving those smaller steps to where you're going with the path. I like the idea of that too, because it gives us a succession of smaller wins that kind of bolster our confidence in ourselves. So I like the idea of that. Now, what do you do if you disappoint yourself? If you set a goal, but you don't meet it, or you miss the target in some kind of way, how do you recover from that? Is that sort of detrimental to the trust building process? Or can we adjust and pivot and then can we come back from that and continue building that trust? Mm, That's a really good question. That's a really good question. So what I would say about this and what I've said about this in the past is we think about the relationships we have with other people, your friends, your family. If a person does something, they don't keep a promise to you or they disappoint you in some kind of way, what would you say to that person? Would you just say like the meanest things you can think of or would you be compassionate and understanding? Because it's a lot easier for us to be more understanding with other people. And sometimes we're too difficult on ourselves. It's a very fine line because we don't want to be a tyrant to ourselves. because you are with yourself 24 hours a day. In your head, your thoughts, your brain is there with you 24 hours a day. So you have to Whatever this looks like for you, and it's different for every person, but you have to have a relationship and act in a way that's conducive to your self-growth and your personal growth and your own confidence. I mean, it's not going to do you any good if you're out here doing all the things, if you're waking up at a certain time, you're keeping promises to yourself, and then one day you miss or something happens, and then you eliminate all the work that you've done before that because you're saying mean things to yourself in your head. It's not going to do any good. I think you have to understand what and where you are and maybe where you could have been. I'll give you an example. This actually just happened last night. I was MMA sparring with some guys and I went in and I was like, man, I feel like I didn't do so hot tonight. I feel like I could have done better than that. But then I had to catch myself. I was like, well, I showed up. At least I showed up. I was there. I was there for the whole time period. I didn't quit halfway through or whatever. Like I was there. It's actually a good point that you bring that up because that is arguably more important than when things go smoothly. Because if things go smoothly, well, yeah, you know, of course you're going to feel great. Of course you're going to be happy about that. But it's like, I wouldn't even say disappoint yourself because when you have those things that happen, how you treat yourself, how you react to yourself, like that's going to matter. Now, a problem when that might come into play is with discipline. If you have the discipline for yourself to maintain and continue doing this thing, that's what's going to be the most important because a big thing for a lot of people is waking up at a certain time. If you need to wake up at exactly this time every day, okay, well, if you miss that day, if you oversleep by a couple minutes or whatever it is, Don't beat yourself up about that. What can you do? What can you learn and take that with you to the next day or whatever? I mean, that sounds like a really simple example, but it's not. Especially if we're fortunate enough, we all wake up every single day. Whatever these things that you are that you do every single day is never an insignificant thing. If it's something that repeats itself every single day, the way you react, the way you see that, the way you interpret that, those things matter. I don't know if that answered your question or not. Yeah, I like that. And I do think that As you mentioned, we often don't give ourselves the same grace that we give other people. I think we would be shocked at ourselves if we sometimes said the things to other people that we say in our heads to ourselves. We might even get a slap or something. (laughs) So I definitely agree with that. And taking that step back and just saying, hey, what did I achieve already that I can kind of build on? So even if this didn't go so great. I can build on the things that I have already put in place. I think that does actually probably even bring more self-confidence if you can deal with challenges and you can deal with setbacks and stand back up from that and move forward. So that brings me kind of to another question that I was wondering, did you figure this all out on your own or by yourself or Do you think that there is a component of community or support that is needed as you're going through this journey and as you're trying to find your path? Did you have that support or did you do this on your own? Hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think humility is one of the most important characteristics that we can ever have in our life. Because we have to know what we currently know, no matter where you are, what we currently know, there is more to know. Where we're currently at, there is farther we can go. That's a really good question. In my early 20s, I was reading a lot. I wasn't really into podcasts at the time, but I was listening to the YouTube videos and stuff from people like Tony Robbins and Inky Johnson and Joe Rogan and these kind of guys, just these long form conversations. And I learned a lot, especially from the reading. Man, I don't know. There was one year I probably read 20 books. If you're an avid reader, maybe that doesn't sound like a lot, but to me, that was a lot because I didn't really read before that 
unless I was in high school or something. So I didn't really read before that. But then as I kind of got more into this thing, I don't know, four or five years into the entrepreneurship thing, I started going to networking events, other business people who are maybe in different industries, maybe a similar industry, but they were five, 10, 15 years ahead of me. And just trying to see how are these other people doing this? What are other people doing? What are the mistakes they've made? What are something they've come back from? Because if you're fortunate enough to live 100 years, you're not going to make probably all the mistakes or successes that you could that are possible to make. We were talking before we started recording here. One of the beauties about social media is that we can learn and we can benefit and we can network with other people and we can share these things. But I think that if you're in a spot where it's not necessarily entrepreneurship, if you're trying to grow something, whether it's family, career, whatever, if you have the humility to know that you can improve wherever it is that you are, you can improve, then you will improve. I was talking to a guy a couple weeks ago and he was like, no matter what I do, I just feel like there's always room for growth. I feel like I can always grow. And I told him, I said, yeah, that mentality sort of ensures that you always will grow. Because if you always feel the need, there is a need to grow, then you will always grow. Now, growth sounds different. Somebody hearing this might say, oh, well, that doesn't really apply to me, but kind of does apply to you because there's 8 billion people or whatever it is on the earth. If you were to ask every single person, you're probably going to get 8 billion different responses of what success is. So whatever that is for you, they're always a way to improve. I think Tony Robbins calls it constant and never ending improvement. Man, Tony Robbins was a huge inspiration to me back then. I was listening to a lot of his material. Yeah, I like his material as well. <laughs> so I think when you stop growing, you will stagnate. And I think at that point, you're no longer even looking forward because you're standing where you are and that's where you stay. So it's important that we take those opportunities to further ourselves and to grow. And And through that, we also might find surprising ways in which we can grow and connect with others. So I find that a fascinating topic all on its own, almost like another podcast episode sure. <laughs> we could do just on that. Absolutely. I am curious about what happened as far as changes when that shift happened to you in your early 20s, because if you're living inauthentically or you're not able to express yourself, I would imagine that has consequences for your mental and emotional well-being and has maybe even physical consequences. You know, some people, they start getting all sorts of weird aches and pains when they're not able to actually live how they want to live. So did you experience changes? And then how did you experience those when you actually started coming into alignment and being able to express yourself? How did that change your life? When we were first talking about self-authenticity, we were talking about how you cannot be your own person, how you're trying to fit into a box that everybody else has for you, whatever that is. And basically, when people are living vicariously through you, when they are living their values, their dreams, their goals through you, like we said before, you cannot be your own person. You cannot shine your unique light to the world, whatever that is for you. And one thing that I really noticed about in my personal situation was there were very few people who understood or agreed with what I was doing as far as the entrepreneurship thing goes. Before I was 20 years old, I probably had 30 jobs, probably more than that. And I mean, I worked for really big companies, warehousing, manufacturing, the people who were my coworkers saw this as a good opportunity and they were sort of happy with the pay and everything else like this. And I was like, there's something in me that says, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but this is not it. It almost made me feel, because I already had the self-confidence issue back at that time, this also made me feel like I was doing something wrong. Like I was like, man, there are all these people around me. They're happy with this. Like I'm supposed to be happy here. Realizing that I was not supposed to be there and taking the step to be wherever I was supposed to be. At that point, it was just taking a step out of that situation. Taking a step wherever I was supposed to be was like, man, I am now in a spot where I do contribute and help and give myself more freely to people. The crazy thing about this is like, I look back over that time. Like I said, I think about this every once in a while, looking back over that time. And I met some great people at those jobs, great people had great experiences, whatever. But I'm looking back over that time and I'm like, man, I have learned so much since then. I'll still meet people today that are in their early 20s and they're kind of in that space, early young entrepreneurs, whatever it is. And I'm sort of letting them know where I was and kind of how it worked for me. And man, that's everything. Like, even if I didn't do or didn't make the progress that I've made, if I am able to do that for somebody else, that really makes me feel that's a huge achievement for me. 
I think the biggest shift for me or the biggest change for me was being able to be the person for other people that I once needed for myself. Because back at the time, I knew how big and how important, just how little of that I actually needed. It's crazy that we're even talking about this. I'm actually getting chills right now, but you're probably familiar with Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. He has a philosophy of be the hero in your own story. Yeah. Be the person that you at one point needed. And I think that's a good philosophy for everybody because everything goes back to the self-authenticity. If I was to try to be, if you were to tell me your life story and I was to try to be the hero that you needed at one point in your life, I couldn't do it because I don't have your life experience. You don't have my life experience. The audience that's listening to this. Everyone has their unique life experience. It might be similar, but it's unique to you. I cannot fit into that role for you. You cannot fit into that role for me. But if we are the person that we once needed, yes, this is sort of a metaphysical conversation here, but if we are the person that we once needed and that person that we once were still exists in our memory, still exists in our mind, I'm sure you're familiar with the inner child. If we were the person that we once needed, that person still exists, even if it's in your subconscious mind, even if it's in your memory, and you can heal those things. This goes into healing. You can heal whatever damage it was, whatever wounds you were. I'm sure you've heard before about people having a conversation with their inner child, just kind of meditating and talking to their inner child, whatever it was that that child version of them needed, and just sort of healing that wound. And that's a very profound experience if you've ever tried to do that. You can actually go a step farther with that. You can say your inner child, who you are now and who you want to be in the future. And you can have sort of a union there with the three versions of yourself. But anyways, be the hero in your own story. Be the person that you once needed. And I think even that, man, I was just talking to somebody the other day, and it's like she had sort of an issue that I had at one point, which was a self-worth issue. You know, this self-worth just trying to, again, this all goes back to self-authenticity. She felt like she was at a place where her self-worth was derived from the things around her, the achievements, the accolades, that kind of thing. So it's like maybe our purpose here, maybe what we're supposed to do is continue to be the best version of ourselves. And if we do that on the surface level, it does sound selfish, but if we do that, every person that's connected to us, friends, family, business, these people all benefit when we can give the best version of ourselves to them. That's very profound. And also at the same time, really empowering to yourself and also to these parts that you're healing within yourself. You show up differently, I believe, if you're authentic and you feel sort of lined up within yourself and you feel whole and holistic, you show up differently in your life and also with other people. So that's a really interesting observation to be that hero in the story, because I just imagine, you know, if we actually all got that chance to heal the inner child, and if we all got that chance to maybe speak to someone who was struggling with the same things and can benefit from that wisdom now. So many things in this world would change for the better, I believe. So yeah, that's a really profound impact and a profound change that had on your life. That kind of leads actually into your podcast, which is called the Pure Wisdom Podcast. So do you talk about these kind of stories, these experiences on your podcast as well? We talk about so many things on there. I mean, the general theme is self-improvement. There's a lot of fitness and health talk on there, business, entrepreneurship, personal growth, adversity, overcoming adversity, these kind of things. All these topics are sort of in there. The goal with that Pure Wisdom podcast is to attract guests that have some sort of wisdom to contribute that we can sort of all learn from. That's the general goal with that. But yeah, with all these topics and more, definitely dating and relationships, and we cover so many things on there. Yeah, that sounds amazing. So of course, we will be linking to your offerings for the social channels and the podcast in the show notes as well. So our listeners can connect with you on those channels, they can check out your podcast episodes, and they can maybe get a feel for how they can become the heroes in their own stories through benefiting from the wisdom of your guests who are also sharing their stories. So be sure to check our show notes when we wrap up this episode, have a look, and we will connect you to all of the things that Cody has to offer and also his podcast, which I'm sure you'll have a great time listening to his episodes. 
And Cody, it has been a pleasure having you on the podcast today and discussing how living authentically can make such a huge impact in your life and the lives of those around you. So thank you for coming on today and sharing your story and your wisdom with us today. I really appreciated this chance to speak with you and finding out more about where you have been and how you have journeyed. So thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. I want to make the connection here before we close out. One of the many reasons that self-authenticity is so important, especially with facing adversity, when you have something that challenges you, when you have some sort of adversity that challenges you, you have to know how to respond, how to react. You have to have something to reference. And if you don't have a solid sense of identity, a solid sense of self, when this thing happens that challenges you, you're not going to know how to respond because you don't even know who you are with yourself. You're not even grounded with yourself. So if I'm not mistaken, that's one of the themes of this podcast is sort of the adversity, the mental health. Having a solid sense of self, being grounded in yourself when you face that adversity, not if, but when you face that adversity, it's going to help you reference what you're supposed to do. I have a job. I have a career where my car breaks down. Well, that's not going to stop me from doing this because I have already given myself that I myself have the identity that I am the person that gets this job done. That's just a simple example. So I just wanted to make that quick connection before we closed out because having that solid sense of self being grounded in who you are is one of the few things that's going to help you get through and overcome that adversity, whatever that is for you. Yeah, that's a really important point that you're touching on. Very often throughout different points in life, even if we had it before, we can lose our sense of self again, depending on traumas we go through or experiences we have. So that can shift at sort of any point in our lives. So really important at those times to come back to ourselves and actually regain that sense of self. Maybe it's different than it was before. Or maybe it's the same or similar, but to have that anchor point that we can go from when we face those challenges in life. Yeah. So thank you for pointing that out. I think that's a really, really important thing for listeners to keep in mind because we're probably never going to go through life without any challenges. <laughs> this is something that pretty much every one of us is going to face at some point in our lives. And then it's important that we can connect back to ourselves and find that place again where we are aligned with ourselves. So yeah, thank you for making that explanation. I do think that's a really important point on healing and moving forward with our lives through adversity. Thank you very much for that. And thank you for being here and spending time with us today. I really, truly appreciate your take on things and how you have come through the challenges that you've experienced. And thank you for sharing. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Take care of yourself, Cody. Thanks. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen in. If you enjoy the Journey podcast, please support us by subscribing, sharing on social media and leaving us a review. We appreciate you. And you can find more of The Journey on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and our website, thejourney.com. Sending you love and courage and see you next time.